Hey, what's up guys? Matt Laidlaw here coming to you from LA area's oldest, largest, and finest Harley-Davidson dealership, Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a road test and a review and kind of an overview and give you guys some information on the 2018 Sportster 1200 Custom, so the XL 1200C. So this bike's been out for a long time now. It has some, some pretty major changes uh, in recent years and kind of some, some decent changes this model year as well as far as cosmetics and the finishes on the engine. So I'm gonna get into the details on that right now. So let's jump into this here guys. So this is a brand new 2018 XL 1200C Sportster 1200 Custom. And the Sportster family has been around for a long time, since 1957. The Sportster has been continuously produced in the Harley Davidson lineup. The 1200 Custom specifically has been around since 1996. So this is a very long running family and a very long running model within that family. So I'm gonna go over a couple key dates and big changes over the, the last couple decades on this bike. So the Evolution engine, the air-cooled Evolution engine that you've seen this bike today was first introduced to the bike in 1986. Now obviously there's been a lot of uh, tweaks and modifications to the engine over those years, but the basic engineering and premise from this engine has been around for a long time. And for that reason, you know, you have that real stereotypical Harley Davidson mechanical feel and, and character and soul to these bikes, which is something that a lot of people love about the Harley Davidson motorcycles in general. So a big change that came about in these bikes as well in the Sportster family came about in 2004 when everything went to a rubber mounted engine. So 2003 and before that it was hard mounted to the frame. So there was a lot of vibration in these motorcycles. So what the rubber mounting did to that in 2004 was it alleviated a lot of that vibration that would otherwise travel up to the handlebars and rattle your teeth out. On the rear end, you've got a LED tail light there. You've got a 150 millimeter rear tire width. It's on a 16 inch rim. And this bike is belt driven. The final drive is belt, as are all Harley Davidsons transfers more power from the engine to the rear wheel and less maintenance. You don't have to worry about lubricating a chain and you don't have to worry about lubricants flipping up on your freshly washed bike. And you've got the gas emulsion coilover shock in the rear. Those came about in the 2016 model year. And the 1200 Custom has a few more functionality features on them than some of the other Sportsters, one of those being two up seat so this bike is passenger ready from the factory it comes with passenger pegs as well some of the sportsters are just solo seats the bike also has a four and a half gallon tank so this is the biggest fuel capacity of any sportster in the lineup one more reason why this is kind of a you know function before form type of bike um, it's kind of the the daddy of the sportsters so to speak and you've got the two bullet turn signals back there. The brakes were all upgraded in 2014. You got a dual piston caliper brake, less, less brake effort as well to engage the brakes. You got a single disc in the front and the rear. You can get ABS on this bike. It's 795 bucks, get ABS. And that, that was an option that was introduced in the 2014 model year. Before 2014, you could not get ABS on a Sportster. Ever since then, though, you could get it as, a, as an upgrade. And here's a shot of the primary cover. You can see that the derby cover there is black. That's one of the cosmetic changes they, they made this year, which is actually a, a good segue into my next topic here. So in the 2018 model year, Harley-Davidson made some key components on this bike black. 
Here's a shot of the front brakes again. You got a, again the dual piston caliper front brake that was upgraded in the 2014 model year. But the lower legs there, the lower forks you can see are black as well. The triple trees. You got the eye rod hood over the front headlamp that is black as well. Uh, another big point on this bike, you got a 130 millimeter front tire. It's a real fat, thick front tire on here. That came about in the 2011 model year. The 2011 model year was a big year for the 1200 Custom. They totally changed the look of the bike, including the front end and the tank. The tank, they went to a wider, flatter tank. And they also, this year, in the 2018 model year, they blacked out the air cleaner cover, and you can see the rocker box covers there are black as well. So just kind of like some some black accents to the bike this year. You can see that eyebrow hood over the, the headlamp as well that I was mentioning and the, the mirrors as well. So just last year and before that, this bike was pretty much all chrome. So a little bit of a cosmetic twist on the overall look of the bike this year. But that meaty tire up front, I really prefer the, the fatter, thicker tire. I feel like it absorbs the road a little bit better. It gives you an extra layer of, of just ride comfort when you're going down the road. So let me start the bike up for you here. Here's your ignition. So the air-cooled Evolution engine is definitely, like I've said before, the stereotypical Harley-Davidson rumble that you can really see and feel and has that, you know, the heart and soul of what you'd expect from a Harley-Davidson. So this is a little toggle switch here that I'm pressing with my left thumb and that's going to cycle between a few options on the digital display on your speedometer. You can see your, your gear and RPM readout. You can see what your odometer is and you've got a, a trip A and a trip B, and if you hold those buttons down, hold it down on the trip A and trip B, you can zero out your trip, just like a car. You've also got a clock on there as well. And this bike has ABS, which is why you see the ABS light flashing there. And above that, you've got your, your neutral indicator lights and your high-low beam, your oil lamp, and then your turn signals as well. You do have self-canceling turn signals on this bike. A couple other things about the 1200 Custom. Like I mentioned in the 2011 model years when they really changed the 1200 Custom quite a bit to a different style tank and almost like a meatier, fatter stance, especially with the front end. They changed the front tire to 130 millimeter front tire. And in that year as well, Harley-Davidson had this program called the HD1 Custom Program where you could go on to harleydavidson.com and use their online application and customize a bike that you could see graphically in real time as you picked out your different parts. Uh, something similar to that still does exist to this day um, with the exception of you can't order the bike from the factory. So what you're able to do with this 1200 Custom when it first came out in 2011 is you go on to this application tool on their website and pick out things like engine finishes, bars, wheels, exhaust, and you could have the bike shipped to you, uh, to your local dealer with your specifications that you had and how you built it online. 
And a couple years after that, they actually introduced the Street Bob into that program as well, that HD1 program as well. So for a year or two, you could do that on a Street Bob. And then I want to say two or three years ago, they discontinued the program completely. Um, and I think that was just due to maybe uh, complicating the manufacturing pro process in combination with not a, a low demand. I probably only did like five or six of those uh, over the course of the HD1 year or the HD1 program when it was in, in force. Of course, now you can go on harleyoverson.com and pick any model and, and put it up there on their application. You can see what the parts are gonna look like uh, and you have kind of a limited amount of parts you can put on the bike, but they use some of the most popular parts on the different models So you can kind of get an idea of different seats and, and bars and things like that on these bikes So I don't like to spend too much time on the boring statistics But I'm just gonna point out some key differences between the 1200 custom and the two brand new bikes in the Sportster family the 48 special and the iron 1200 so they're all 1200 CC bikes but there are some pretty major functionality differences between these three bikes that we'll jump into here. So let's start off at the top here with the price. So pricing, you've got on the 1200 Custom, you've got that thing priced off at $10,999. The 48 Special is more money, you're about 650 bucks more. And then on the Iron 1200, you're less money. So about 600 bucks less on the Iron 1200. So moving down a little bit, you've got ABS. ABS is an option on all three of these bikes at 795 bucks. Security is an option as well at 395 bucks. And on the security, by the way, if you get this from the factory, it removes the ignition. So when you hit the run switch, that acts as your ignition as well. It's kind of like the new soft tails. They're pretty much keyless. You just have a security fob. When the security fob is within range, it's a proximity sensor. It enables you to turn on the ignition. So that kind of acts the same way. So like I said before, this has the air-cooled Evolution engine. Evolution engine's been out for a while. This engine's bulletproof, by the way. This engine is very reliable. It's kind of your tried and true Harley-Davidson motor. You know, it just keeps, it keeps ticking. Compression ratio on these bikes is 10 to 1 compression ratio. So let's go down to some more of the good stuff here. So front wheels, we'll touch on this real quick. So you've got a 130 millimeter front tire on both the 1200 Custom and the 48 Special, 100 millimeter on the iron. So it's a little bit narrower front tire, but you've got a bigger wheel on the iron. You got a 19 inch wheel on the iron and then a 16 inch on both the 1200 Custom and the 48. The rear wheels, the rear tires on all three of these bikes are 100% identical. Fuel capacity, this is kind of a big one for you fuel hogs. So 4.5 gallon tank on the 1200 Custom, which is the biggest offering of any Sportster. No other Sportster has this tank. So for that reason and a couple other reasons, if you want to get a Sportster that's also you know, a decent range bike, then definitely go for the 1200 Custom. You know, that in combination with a little bit more comfortable seat that also accommodates a passenger just makes a 1200 Custom more of a, a function-driven bike. The 48 Special and 1200 Iron are like, you know, your your quintessential bobbers style, you know, modern bobbers, real trendy style right now. So weight on these, the 1200 Custom is the heaviest at 591 pounds, about 30 pounds heavier than the other two. So Harley Davidson claims 73 foot pounds of torque. That's at the crank, 73 foot pounds of torque at 3,750 RPM for the 1200 Custom, 3,500 RPM for these two bikes.
So let me talk to you guys a little bit about my thoughts and opinions and the pros and cons of the Sportster 1200 Custom. So Sportsters, just generally speaking, Sportsters are a good entry-level motorcycle. And I know I'm, I'm gonna get a lot of the, the Sportster lovers out there saying, well, Matt, they're not just an entry-level bike, you know, I'm an experienced rider and I ride them. So you know, let me explain myself. So they are a good entry-level Harley-Davidson, but that doesn't mean it's only limited to that. There's a lot of guys that use Sportsters for a lot of other things. You know, they're a great around town bike. They're a bike that can really be used for dual purpose. You know, I'm seeing more of these Sportsters being used like off road, and you know, with the increasing popularity of the hooligan flat track races right now, Sportsters get used for that. And so, you know, you're, using, you're seeing some of the guys you know, on social media use these for you know, off road purposes. Now that's just a really small percentage of people buying the Sportsters, but you know the, the Sportster can be used for a lot of things. As I mentioned earlier, the Sportster frame and family have a really a lot of fitment options because the frames and a lot of the fitments haven't changed for a long time. Everybody's made parts for these bikes, and so it's very easy to really create your vision on this motorcycle because there's a lot of different areas and manufacturers of parts to pull from. Uh, you know Harley Davidson genuine accessories. There's a lot of stuff for pull, to pull from there as well. So a major pro on these bikes is your ability to just bolt stuff right up and and customize them. And I feel like there's there's a huge uh, almost a uh, a subculture in the Harley Davidson world of, of DIY guys guys that like to build and work on their bikes as a hobby and do it themselves, which I think is cool. Uh, this is a great bike for that. Uh, these bikes are pretty easy to, to work on and generally speaking Harley Davidson's just as a whole are a great bike to tinker with so that being said you don't have to be a, a part-time mechanic to own one of these motorcycles I can't say that was the case 30 years ago but nowadays you put gas in it change the fluids and, and you're good to go on these things another pro is these things are very resilient these engines have been around for a while and they just run they run good you know, there's really not that many problems with these things they just keep going you make sure that the oil levels are good and that you you do the, the service intervals and these things will run for a very long time and that's that's another good thing about harley davidson's in general as well is you know there's a lot of disposable motorcycles out there after 10 years you know, a lot of times people just junk a motorcycle Harley's are one of those bikes that can sit in a barn for 20 years and someone can pull it out and fix it up and start riding it again. You know, Harley's just kind of never go away. They, they're like the complete opposite of a, of a disposable motorcycle. So the Sportsters and these bikes would definitely fit in that category. Uh, and another thing is, that's great about the Sportsters is they have a, a good price point. You know, you, like I, I showed you earlier, this thing is between ten and $11,000 on the bike. And you know the next step up, like a soft tail, is going to run you like fourteen five or fifteen thousand dollars to get into the next price point up. So let me talk to you a little bit about the cons on this bike since we're on the freeway now. So generally speaking, the Sportsters aren't a good like long, long haul, uh, high speed highway bike. So you know the type of riding I'm doing right here, you know I'm doing about sixty five miles an hour, seventy miles an hour. And just the, the, the suspension, unless you're on a really, really smooth road, which I'm not, California highways are not known for you know, being smooth. So just the, the suspension just doesn't really keep up very well. So you know, the dampening and the rebounding on the suspension aren't great for this type of riding on really bumpy roads. So the bike's doing a lot of hopping around as I'm running over you know, the cracks and bumps in the freeway. And it's more of a stay focused and, and hang on type of experience as opposed to when I'm riding my street glide and I'm just kicking back and I, I feel like I don't even need to hang onto the handlebars half the time. It, it's so smooth. Uh, that and, you know, I'm getting lots of wind on this bike, which isn't abnormal. Uh, I'm just used to a fairing or because you know, I ride a lot of the touring bikes. But, you know, the, fin, the wind obviously is perfectly normal for most motorcycles out there and you can get a windshield as well. Most of the Sportsters have pretty limited fuel capacity. So 
who I'd recommend this bike for is someone that knew that they wanted to get a Sportster. So maybe it's maybe they're a smaller rider as well. The, the Sportsters are great for smaller riders. You don't have to be a beginner rider. Maybe you're an advanced rider, but you're not the biggest guy and you want something with sporty handling. The Sportster's are a great bike. And so, yeah, that, that would be a good fit for you. But the 1200 Custom, I feel like, is a better ride, comparatively speaking, than most of the other Sportsters with the exception of the Roadster. The Roadster has a really great ride just because it has really good shocks on it. The travel is really nice, but that's more of more geared towards, you know, really doing the canyon carving stuff and the twisties. The 1200 Custom is more of your like, if you could call it a touring Sportster, this is probably the closest bike that would even begin to be able to be called a touring Sportster. So you have a little bit more comfortable seat you have a four and a half gallon tank that gives you, you know, a better range. You know, you're probably going to be going maybe 100, 140, 150 miles between Phillips, something like that on this bike. That's being conservative. And, you know, you've got uh, the fat, the nice fat sidewalls in the tires. You've got that thick front tire. And so really what that does, and I think a lot of people overlook this, that fat front tire really smooths out the ride in a couple different ways. From a standpoint of just shock absorption, just having that thicker sidewall there absorbs more of the, the small road bumps and having that, that wider tire as well up front really soaks up a lot of the rain grooves and just little cracks and stuff on the road so your front tire doesn't you know, track the small little cracks and grooves in the road something like a smaller thinner tire like maybe on the iron that's going to have more of a that that feeling at high speeds especially if you're hitting rain grooves on the freeway of your front wheel kind of tracing the small imperfections and cracks in the road so you're not going to get that as much on the 1200 custom with the fatter front tire so one of the biggest mistakes i see people making when they're choosing a harley davidson is people place too much emphasis on just the looks of the bike. They'll walk in, they'll walk around the showroom floor, they'll have a price in mind, a budget in mind that they want to spend, and then they just kind of pick out the bike that looks best to them. And don't get me wrong, looks are very, very important. If we didn't care what our motorcycle looked like, we would all buy Indians and Hondas. You know, it wouldn't matter if the bike was but ugly. And, you know, but, but it's like choosing a woman, you know. Uh, looks are very very important but people that get married or choose a girlfriend just based off of looks alone and nothing else usually end you know with, with a breakup so oh, these guys are pretty awesome by the way doing wheelies on their bicycles so it's the same thing with a Harley Davidson you have to really take into account more than just the look of the bike and the look is definitely in in the top two or three don't get me wrong but you got to ask yourself, and this is a question I always ask people when they're shopping for a motorcycle, hey, what type of riding are you going to be doing and where is your skill level at? For the most part, people that are more skillful riders and have been riding for longer, a longer time, usually those types of riders, not always, but usually those types of riders do overnight trips or longer rides or, yeah, like I almost got creamed by that car too, they do longer trips, they do longer rides or they ride through the canyon and they try to ride real aggressively through the canyons. One of those two things. Now, someone that is maybe a newer rider or more casual rider that just rides around town, well, he, he, may not, he may have completely different needs than the guy that wants to go to Las Vegas for the weekend with his buddies. So you gotta ask yourself that. So if you're a Sportster buyer and you're trying to decide on which Sportster, ask yourself, hey, am I gonna be doing those those overnight trips and if the answer is yes well you know then, then you might want to look at the the 1200 custom you know you don't want to be the guy in the group that has to stop for gas if you're on a 48 every 80 or 90 miles you know i know guys that have bought 48s because they like the look of them and they look cool don't get me wrong but they realize that they've got you know a long commute to work that they're riding their bike to and they have to fill up on a daily basis and that just gets really old really fast. So the other thing I see is you know guys buying irons, and they say, well, you know, one of my primary things I want to do is is take 
my girlfriend for a ride with me on the back. Well, you know, it's pretty easy to buy a different seat and put passenger pegs on there, but that's just, you know, one more additional expense. I'm not trying to knock 48s and irons. I just see a lot of people coming in and blindly buying those bikes without really taking into consideration other needs that they have. So if you have other needs, and you know, let me back up for a second. The other thing I, I see is people coming in and just blindly buying street glides and road glides when really people should be buying an electric glide. People will come up to me and say, yeah, I want to get a road glide. Well, and by the way, I want to go ahead and put a tour pack on and I want the lower leg fairings and give me a taller windshield. Oh, and I want a more comfortable seat because I'm going to go on long road trips. Well, guess what, man? You know, you, you just spent probably $3,000 right there and you probably should have just gotten a Rogue Glide Ultra. So you just have to really be honest with yourself and figure out what type of riding you're gonna be doing uh, because the 1200 Custom does lend a couple functionality items that you don't get from some of the other Sportsters. Um, like I've already mentioned, the, the fuel tank, the more comfortable seat, the two up riding and additional lighting like on the rear so people are gonna see you a little bit better. And so you, know, you might wanna take those things into consideration. The other thing that makes the Sportster platform not as good of a, a highway bike, like high speed, long duration riding, is the fact that it's a five speed transmission as opposed to the six speed. You know, that sixth gear on the soft tails and, and higher makes a big difference. You know, to take this bike up to 70 miles an hour, you have to be doing, I want to say like 3,500 RPM just to do 70 miles an hour. In six gear on a big twin bike, it's 3,000 RPM, you're doing 80 miles an hour. So, and, and when you're riding a cruiser, you know, the premise behind riding a cruiser is just to cruise, right? Have a really cool, calm, relaxed, good ergonomics ride. And you know, I mean, it's not like this white knuckle experience, although you can make riding a Harley a white knuckle experience, no problem. But, you know, when you're riding a Harley, you don't want to have to rev out your, your bike to 10,000 RPM, like a crotch rocket to you know get up to speed you know it's all about that that putting down the highway you know feel when you're out there on the road and so you have less of that just kicked back cruiser experience out on the freeway because of that five speed transmission on these sportsters so you know going back to kind of comparing this to the 48 and the iron you know i will say the 48 and the iron i personally like the style of those two bikes better than i like the style of this bike I feel like the style of this bike is, you know, it's it's more of a, a like 90s in my opinion, whereas like the the bobber look, the dark custom look as Harley calls it on the the iron and the 48 is more in tune with what's hip, especially on the new 48 special and the iron 1200. I love the new AMF throwback graphics. That's you know really on point with with what guys in that that age demographics are looking for that's that's a, you know the 70s look on those bobber bikes is is a, is a really cool style so you know they did change the the graphics on this bike this year on the the 1200 custom and i do like them but i don't know i, I just feel like this bike is is more of a midwest type of style i don't feel like it's a, it's a west coast style really but so I don't, I don't think for that reason, I don't think the styling really appeals to a younger demographic. So another thing the, good, the Sportsters are good at, and really this is only a benefit in California, but they're pretty good at you know squeezing through traffic. You know, what I'm doing right here, right now, I would never even attempt on a street glide. So if you're in a, a densely populated, heavy traffic urban area, the Sportster could also fulfill a different benefit and that is you know just getting through tight places and just being a smaller bike to kind of weave through traffic so that's about it guys um, so in a nutshell you know who I'd recommend the bike for you know someone who's getting into the the Harley world and doesn't want a real big bagger that's real top heavy maybe the, the they're riding is primarily going to be on surface street stuff you know below 60 miles an hour it's fine for the occasional trip here and there can you go across the country on it yes you can uh, I just you know, there's just more 
options out there that, that are, are better for that type of stuff. If you're an experienced rider and you want a go fast bike, you want something to really get out there and rip on the freeways, you know, do 70, 80 miles an hour, then I would highly, highly recommend going up to a soft tail if your budget will permit. Uh, I usually don't recommend sportsters to real advanced riders unless they know exactly what they're getting into and they have a really niche specific purpose you know some of those some of those purposes that I, I mentioned earlier so yeah usually usually the guys that ride in big groups get on the road go places do things they're they're usually better off going up to at least a, a soft tail model that you know maybe maybe you're a smaller guy you know maybe you're five four five five 140 150 pounds you know the sports should be fine for you you know maybe you don't want a big old bike because it's just bigger than than what your needs are that would be a good a good reason as well but just as a general rule of thumb the sportsters are more of your local around town bike uh, if you're a newer rider they're great as well they're easy to handle easy to maneuver uh, but again if you're an advanced rider I would really you know, take a test ride and really know what you're getting yourself into before you picked up a Sportster. The other thing is if you're, if you're a tinker guy, if you're one of these guys that's part of the, the culture that really likes the, the sporties for the name, the culture, and tinkering on them, and just having this engine that is easy to work on and everything fits it, this is a, a great platform for you as well. Uh, and if you're one of those guys too, I'll, I'll mention as well, um, and I, again, this is just my speculation, but because this frame and engine has been around for so long, I think this is probably next, uh, the next family for Harley Davidson to change up. So Harley Davidson just announced that they're closing the York, or excuse me, the Kansas City plant. In Kansas City plant right now, they build the Sportsters in the streets. So. Uh, my prediction is they'll have them for one more year because they're going to have the plant operating until the the mid 2019. So I believe it was June of 2019, which ends the the end of production of the 2019 model year. So I would get one this year or get one in 2019 model year if you want one of these bikes because I think they'll probably go away in 2020. I don't know for sure, that's just my guess. Anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you're looking for a new Harley Davidson in the Southern California area, please hit me up at Laid Laws Harley Davidson. I'd love to earn your business on a new bike. Take care guys, later.